Joining us now, Wells Fargo, Stephen Cahal. He uh, raised his price target to 128 from 115 as a buy in the stock. Uh, what does that mean? Why do you think they're back on offense, Steve? Yeah, and thanks for having me on this morning. So, you know, over the last, um, I guess, four or five quarters since Bob came back, um, the first few were very much about getting things back together, getting the creative strategy back on track, cutting costs, raising price at DTC, and that didn't necessarily lead to better financial results in the short term. The last two quarters have led to better results. Uh, and that's included the free cash flow guidance they gave last quarter, the new EPS guidance they gave this quarter. So Disney now seems to be operating from a position of strength, and that includes at DTC parks and sports. Yeah, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, do you think investors are responding more, though, to the ability to significantly cut costs, both in SG&A and overall at direct-to-consumer? Because it's still not like there's a great deal of revenue growth here, is there? Yeah, I think it is both. I mean, I think you're right, David, that investors don't want to see Disney just cut its way to higher earnings. This is a creative company. Um, it's a growth company. And so I think mixed into that is the fact that they're going to be implementing password sharing to grow subscribers at DTC. They very effectively raised price, which shows that Disney Plus is under monetized. Uh, Parks had another terrific quarter, which shows that people still really value uh, that experience. Um, and so I think that the growth is there. Um, in addition to the cost cuts, just making the earnings look a lot stronger. Yeah, a lot of strategic announcements as well, not to mention the one about the, the streaming joint venture around sports. But get, give me your reaction to the Epic investment, for example. Billion and a half there, and Epic obviously going to be developing new games for Disney. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I think what really differentiates Disney from its media peers is that while it does some things that the peers do, creating shows, creating movies, streaming, that sort of thing, um, that you know, relationship that it has with the consumer is very unique with its parks, with its cruise ships, um, and now you know, with things like uh, virtual reality and with the epic investment gaming. Uh, and so I think that this ability for it to engage consumers in these worlds that it creates you know, through the different characters, through the different universes, again, that's very uniquely Disney. And it creates an attachment with revenue and profits that goes on for you know, sometimes a lifetime. So this is another you know, kind of arrow in, in that quiver. Um, finally, I hate to end on a painful note for those of us who uh, have Comcast shares. It's the only shares we can actually own here at uh, CNBC, I should point out. Down another 3% today. I know you cover it. Uh, has reversed dramatically from what was uh, a nice move after earnings on the charter earnings, which were not good. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Why is the stock seemingly uh, down so, so much in such a short amount of time? Yeah, and, and sorry to hear that, David. Um, but I think what you've got here is, is a reaction to um, the sports JV. Uh, as you know, Comcast and Paramount were not part of that. And you know, our, our view is that this is going to accelerate cord cutting, which obviously impacts Comcast on the cable side, um, as well as what they're going through on, on the media side. Uh, and, and Charter has seen some similar reactions. So uh, the more there is out there in sports and streaming, the more consumers will decide to make a different choice than the one they're making today to consume that content. And so I think that's the risk that the market is looking to price in. You do, yeah. So, I mean, listen, the broadband is still the main product, though. It's, you know, you, you lose video subs, the margin's not that great. Maybe it's on the NBCU side as well, then? Yeah, I, I think it is a bit of both. And, of course, um, Charter last week, you know, they, they talked about just the tougher broadband environment than what they had expected for 2023. Uh, we downgraded that stock on, on Friday evening. Um, that had some sympathy trade down in Comcast, you know, the following day, even though Comcast broadband results were more in line with expectations. But, you know, the point is kind of like we've seen in many years yeah. for media, it's a really tough market out there for connectivity these days. Yep. You know, the customer's getting more choice in sports. They're getting more choice in broadband. They're getting more choice in mobile. Um, so I guess that's good for us as consumers, but it's been tough for some shareholders.